Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Lovely to see you guys again. Um, anyway, this video is going to be about books that I had. I actually got these yesterday. Um, a friend of mine has given me some but lent me some of the others. So I thought I'd just come on and share for all you um, bookworms out there like me. I thought you might like to have a look to see what I've got. <music> Then. So I'll get started and tell you the books I've actually got this time. Um, now this one, I actually haven't read any of these books by, well, these authors. I have never read anything from any of these authors, so they're all quite new to me. Um, and this is Anna McPartlin, and it's The Truth Will Out. Um, so that's that particular book. And um, on the back, what it says is, um, twice Harry tries to marry the love of her life, twice she fails. Um, since there are only so many times that she can leave her man, James, standing at the altar, Harry loses him. After this second pre-wedding panic attack, Harry is at sea. Her parents try to distract her, but it's obvious that they know more than they want to admit about why she's always been a little fragile. What they are forced to reveal turns Harry's world upside down. It seems that not only has she lost James, but everything else she thought she could depend on too. As the truth of her past comes out and her world crumbles around her, Harry struggles to pick up the pieces. She can find herself again, and if she does, will it be too late for love? Um, yeah, so this, I thought, was like, it's right up my street, to be honest. So... I'm thinking I might actually do this one first. So that's that one. Um, I won't read kind of what it's about on every book because it takes too long for you. Um, okay, this one is The Ship of Brides. Um, there you go. And this is by Jojo Moyes. Um, I'll quickly read this one because this doesn't won't take long to do this one. Um, but this really intrigued me as well. And it's Australia 1946. 650 brides are departing for England to meet the, the men they married in wartime. But instead of the luxury liner they were expecting, they find themselves aboard an aircraft carrier alongside a thousand men. Um, on the sun-baked decks, old loves and past promises became... Um, become distant memories and tensions are stretched to the limit as brides and husbands change their minds and for Frances Mackenzie one bride in particular it soon becomes clear that sometimes the journey is more important than the destination um, and it actually does say here it's wonderfully romantic and moving and that's by the Daily Mail um, and I thought this oh see now I've read that I don't know whether to read that one first Oh, okay, now this is, um, this one's by Maggie O'Farrell and it's The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox um, and it says here, almost ridiculously pleasurable, shocking, heartbreaking and fascinating by the times. Um, and this sounds really good as well. Edinburgh in the 1930s, the Lennox family is having trouble with its youngest daughter. Esme is outspoken, unconventional, repeatedly embarrasses them in polite society. Something will have to be done. Years later, a young woman named Iris Lockhart receives a letter informing her that she has a great aunt in a psychiatric unit who is about to be released. Iris has never heard of Esme Lennox and the one person who should know more her granddaughter kitty seems unable to answer iris's questions um what could esme have done to warrant a lifetime in an institution and how is it possible for a person to be so completely erased from family's history um that again i mean 
sounds amazing and it's got a really good write-up from the like the independent our magazine scotland on sunday in the daily mail so that's another one that i'm looking forward to reading um, this one is called Blue Above the Chimneys and this is by uh, Christine Marion Fraser, that's that, this book here. And this one is My Story of Green Acres of Happiness and Black Depths of Despair, Mingling and Weaving into My Life Among uh, Dusty Grey Tenements. Born during the Second World War in Glasgow, Christine Fraser was her mother's eighth child growing up with her siblings in a tiny flat learning to avoid her hard-working hard-drinking one-eyed father's black moods making a menace of herself in the streets along with the other urchins christine lived in poverty but never once cared until she was struck down by a terrible illness suddenly her wild days of childhood were over a long spell in hospital completely changed her life um, now she found herself dependent on others for so many of her needs and on top of that her mother and father died yet Christine was also always resourceful and never once looked down she knew that there was always if you looked hard enough some some blue up above the chimneys so that looks a little bit sad but a good read I think that one now these this is um the author of this book is elizabeth jane howard and it's a trilogy of books here so you've got these three let me put it down and see which is the first so let, volume what so this is the first one then yeah, so it's the light years, that's that one. Um, Hugh, haunted by memories of battle in France, is terrified at the prospect of another war. Handsome, charming Edward, who escaped from the war unscathed, is more occupied by his continuous affairs, of which his desperately bored wife, Villy, is unaware. Talented painter Rupert finds he cannot both paint and be married to his beautiful, demanding wife Zoe. And their sister Rachel is so loyal to her family that she has no time to devote to the woman she feels so passionate about. Lovely half-Jewish Sid. Um, yeah, so this, look, this was... Um, the home place is Sussex, 1937, and it's the English family at home. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. It says, evocative and uh, gracefully written by Cosmopolitan have reviewed that. So that's the first one in the trilogy. Um, the second one, is it this one? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, volume, this is the second one, and it's marking time. That's the second one in the trilogy. Um, and it says, The sunlit days of childish games and family meals are over as the shadows of war roll in and the new generation takes up the story. Um, Louise, who dreams only of playing Hamlet, is brutally brought to the realisation that her parents have their own secrets, passions and yearnings. Um, Clary, who... Religiously, religiously documents all aspects of her life in diaries and letters, learns that her father, who was in the Navy, is now missing somewhere on the shores of France, and sensitive, imaginative Polly feels stuck with a vocation or information about her mother's illness without anything except for the nightmares about the war. Um, so that's that one, that's the second one in the trilogy i'm hoping i'm not going to lose myself too much in these and what i mean by that is i don't mean lose myself in the book but trying to remember who every, all the characters are in it so this is the third one yeah and it's um called confusion um and vogue have viewed it as absorbing and well observed that's the third one in the trilogy um this is London and Sussex, 1942 now. The English family in turmoil. 
during the long dark days of the war um, begins to find the battle for survival echoing the confusion in their own lives headstrong independent um, Louise surprises everyone by abandoning her dreams of the stage and making a society marriage and happiness and loneliness quickly settle in. Michael seems more interested in his ship and his mother to whom he has an extraordinarily close than in his young bride. Polly and Clary now in their late teens finally fulfill their ambition of living in London but the reality is not quite so as they hoped. Polly is coming to terms with the death of her mother and looking after her grieving father while clever sharp Clary is absolutely aware she is neither beautiful like Polly nor striking like Louise and is also um, the only one who seems to believe that her father may not be dead. Um, the tele Sunday Telegraph have said this fine, densely written saga gets stronger with each passing page. So I am really looking forward to reading these, but like I say, I've got like a lot of characters to try and remember. Um, and a final book I've got to show you, I don't really have to sit down and read this. This is something I can just pick up, um, browse through, decide where we want to go. And this is about the National Trust because we joined the National Trust. Ta -da! Last week we joined the National Trust, so yeah, that's just like the front sleeve that's wrapped around it, um, and then here you've got your handbook for 2018 um, with all the different places that you can go to. So I'm really looking forward to going through that, and um, I might like jot down or highlight some of the places that we really want to visit so yeah that's it so if any of you guys are really into like reading um if you've got any books that are really good that you'd like to suggest um if you th if there's one that you think i should maybe start reading before the other because i haven't started any of them yet um then just like put it in the comments i'd be really interested to, to hear from you as to which one you think i should read first um but yeah, I'm really excited to get stuck into these. I really am. You know what it's like when you find a really good book, you just, you lose yourself, don't you? Totally. Um, so I always have to make sure I've done a bit of housework and everything first, otherwise it'll just get left. Um, anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could press that notification bell and then you'll be notified of all my updates. Um, and that's pretty much it, I guess. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and stay fabulous. Bye for now.